Hi everybody and welcome to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. On this video, we've got a post from Am I the A-hole with an update and one from Malicious Compliance. So if you want to go ahead and get started with the stories, just use the timestamps below the video. I'd also like to give a big shout out to all my supporters and the new members that have been coming in. It makes a huge difference and it really means a lot to me, so thank you very much. Now, let's get started with the stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Small Sliced Skin. Am I the A-hole for leaving my husband in the grocery store because he started acting like a toddler? We all go through phases and pick up annoying habits. And sometimes we just need our loved ones to gently tell us if we've picked up a particularly egregious habit. Sometime in the last year, my husband has picked up a habit where he talks like a baby. At first it was funny, but passed into embarrassing, cringe-worthy behavior quickly. Examples. Doggo, Pupper, Woofer, Subwoofer, Pibble, Hootie Boy, People, Burb, Meow Meow, Sammy, Sandwiches, Sammy Whammy, Chicky Nuggies, Chicky Tendies, adding a toddleresque lisp to words, and the ones that really get gross are childish euphemisms for genitalia or sex. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is not endearing or sexy to have my husband talk about my boobies and his wiener and weenie and wee wee, hoo ha's and bajingos, nostalgia from scrubs be damned. We have not had sex for six months because he cannot stop talking about my boobies and it makes me sick. Just before the pandemic hit, we were out at a restaurant with some friends. He actually ordered a Chicky Sammy, like said that exact phrase, Chicky Sammy. Look, it's totally fine that he ordered the chicken sandwich, that's not the issue. Our friends noticed the baby talk because he insisted on continuing the joke and even started talking with this god-awful toddler lilt accent. After that, I just couldn't stomach the idea of going out with him to adult places. I'd go out to the brewery with friends, but god forbid he'd join me and say, me want another beer, or something. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why he's doing this. I finally hit my limit when we were grocery shopping and everything seemed normal and fine until he gasped like a kid, ran to the ice cream section and jumped up and down yelling, ice cream, ice cream, I want chocolate. I was mortified. People were staring at him and me. He kept going and kept saying, can we get poopsie coos? And I just said, either talk to me like an adult or I'm leaving. He started saying, ooh, you must be fun at parties, and lighten up, will you? And crap like that. I said F it and left the store, leaving him to walk home, like a mile, it was fine, because I couldn't even look at him. Since then, things have been very tense, and he keeps telling me that he wants an apology for embarrassing him and leaving him in the store. I told him that people don't get to demand apologies. If someone wants to apologize, it's up to them. And I am absolutely not going to apologize for saving myself the embarrassment of a 35-year-old man with a mortgage and retirement account asking for chocolate ice cream. He got his effing mom involved, no joke. She keeps telling me it's just a phase and that he's probably bored and I should be happy this is his midlife crisis rather than him effing 19 year olds at the local bar. I'm going crazy. Am I the a-hole? Do I really just need to let my husband continuously embarrass me like this? Okay OP, so first of all, for you to not be the a-hole, I would need to believe that this guy is doing this on purpose, which it sounds like it if he told you to lighten up in the store while he was doing this, which is basically acknowledging that he's doing it on purpose. So based on that, I would say, no OP, you are not the a-hole. Now, the one question that remains in my mind is, why in the hell is he doing this? Like, what is he getting out of this? Apart from annoying you, which I think it's quite ridiculous and stupid to purposefully annoy your partner, then what is his endgame here? I don't get it. Is he, is he pulling a prank on you or something? Because you clearly are not laughing, at least not anymore. You found it cute in the beginning, but now it's just annoying, so he should probably just stop it. 
I really don't know or can't speculate regarding what's going on through his mind. What about you guys? What do you think is going on here? Let me know in the comment section and also your judgment on OP and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Befoob14435 says, Not the a-hole. I'd sit him down and have a serious heart to heart. I did not marry a toddler. I married an adult partner to build a life with. I have told you repeatedly that this is not a joke. I find it annoying and whatever other adjectives you'd like. And it has caused me to lose all sexual attraction to you and not having sex for six months is a problem. And instead of modifying your behavior and trying to respect my feelings, you bring in your mother to our relationship to justify your actions. If you are truly a little boy who wants his mommy, you can pack up your stuff and live with her. If you are interested in saving this marriage, you will not only go to a regular doctor for a checkup to make sure there isn't some underlying medical condition for this change in behavior, you will start marriage counseling with me immediately. So if this behavior is in response to some subconscious need you are not having met, we can figure it out together. These are your options. Fight for our marriage as an adult or be a child that's not old enough for any sort of meaningful relationship and go live with your mother. Captain Nolegs says, encourage him to go to the doctor. With the sudden change in his behavior, you're continuing talks to him about it and six months without sex and he still hasn't admitted there's a problem he needs to get checked out. There might be something seriously medically going on. F.U. Gallon says, Not the a-hole, but he got his mommy involved, so tell her she is welcome to take her toddler shopping while he screams, I scream, I scream, I want chocolate. Not to bring him back till she has raised him back to adulthood. Edit. Also, I would suggest that a doctor's visit may also be appropriate if this is in any way non-voluntary, because it may be linked to some kind of cognitive issue. Opie's edit. Sorry, there was only so much space. I have talked to him multiple times, especially about the sexual comments. I've made it extremely abundantly clear that him using terms like boobies and wee wee are absolutely repulsive to me among other things he says. Information. Does he have a job? Yes, and he acts completely normal as far as I know. He worked from home for a while during lockdown and I've never heard him talk like this to anyone he worked with. Does he do it with friends? Sometimes, and it's generally meant to annoy them or gross them out, but he stops. He has friends where they think it's cute to embarrass each other. Is this a kink or a fetish? If so, I'm absolutely done. Edit it because it was offensive. Has he seen a doctor? No, but I've asked him if he needed to talk to someone because he was acting strange and he accused me of being stuck up and judgmental. Given that he doesn't act like this with his co-workers or his family and only jokes around with his friends, I'm willing to bet that this is an indication that he's trying to force this fetish on me non-consensually or trying to get me to leave. Is it a tumor? I don't know. Like I said above, I asked him if he needed to see someone. I can't force him, even if I want to, just to find out if there's any way we can salvage this. But after this post closes, I will try to get to him. Maybe his sister can encourage him, even though he acts completely normal around them. Does he have a childhood trauma? As far as I know, and I'm relatively close to his family and would likely know, the most traumatic thing he had happened was a minor car accident when he was around 13 years old. No injuries, no death, etc. He hasn't been in a car accident in the past two years or anything like that, and I haven't. And, as far as I know, no one else in his family has been, etc. So, the community says that OP is not the a-hole and that she may need to try to talk to her husband very, very seriously, and then OP answered a lot of information requests in her edits. And from those information requests, we can infer that OP's husband hasn't gone through any trauma and may not need any sort of medical checkup or anything like that because he's definitely choosing to do this in particular moments, especially with OP. Now, OP did give us an update, so how about we continue with that to see what's actually going on here? Well, here I am with the update. I talked to my husband after doing some soul searching. There was no tumor, no kink, no childhood trauma. 
I asked him first if he understands why I am upset and to please, please clarify if he was doing this on purpose or if we need to seek medical intervention. He didn't want to tell me at first and I got worried. He eventually caved when I suggested we look for a doctor because of how worried I am. It was a bet with one of his friends that started as them trying to embarrass each other in public. He bet my husband that he couldn't keep it up for the whole year. The only off-limits part was at work because he couldn't jeopardize his career. No, no, he decided to jeopardize his marriage instead. For what prize? What was he going to win? A signed baseball. A baseball. I thought he was joking. No, he was dead serious. How was the friend verifying? My husband would share little videos he took here and there of him upsetting me with the baby talk, including times he tried to initiate sex by whispering his baby talk in my ear. I wasn't in any state of undress. And by seeing us in public, like at the brewery. He got cross with me in the grocery store because I interrupted the recording and almost blew the whole operation. He wasn't remorseful or apologetic. He thought we were both in on this little joke and that I'd find it hysterical. I asked him, did he understand we haven't had sex in months? No, no, it didn't matter. It was all worth it to him. He kept saying, you just don't get it. It's not just the baseball. I told him the joke was over. It was time to stop for good, but that I was willing to move on with him. I could forgive him. No. He wanted to keep going. There are only two months left in the bet, so he's so close. He said, we can have sex if you want, we'll just pretend XYZ. And I was like, why does thinking about your friend even factor in this? What's wrong with you? You never had to do this and ruin our intimate moments. But I just didn't get it. He had to be in character all the time. After a lot of arguing and tears, I left him. I'm heading up to Colorado to be with my family through Christmas and then I'm going to move in with my sister for a little while to figure out next steps. I hope it was worth it. Wow, well OP, I am sorry you went through all that and that your husband just acted like a child, like both literally and in roleplay, like he gave up your marriage for a baseball. I'm sorry, not any baseball, a signed baseball. I understand that can be important to certain fans. But I, I don't think it's more important than your marriage, right? Now, there could be the argument of, hey, you know, now that OP knows the truth, she could just play along. But apparently, this guy had been carrying it for 10 months and ruined their intimate life and all that stuff. I'm not sure it's easy to come back with that without an apology and without working on it, which apparently the husband was not willing to do either. In any case, that's all we know from the story because OP didn't comment anything else. So whatever the outcome was, I hope, OP, that you are in a better place now. Take care. And now, we move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance, and it's by user t 4 tears 50 grams over the weight limit at the airport? I guess I'll eat them. This happened a couple of days ago. Also mandatory, English isn't my first language. For Americans, 50 grams is 1.76 ounces. 200 grams is 7 ounces, 23 kilos is 50.7 pounds. So when I travel by plane, which happens about 2-3 to three times per year, I'm usually quite conscious about the weight of my luggage because of how much you have to pay if it exceeds the limit. This time I put a bit more stuff in because of gifts, but I thought I was fine. I pass the police and get to the check-in where a woman in her late 30s, early 40s, that reminded me of my old history teacher, indicated me to proceed. I give my passport, do the usual stuff, and I put my luggage on the scale, which shows 23.05 kilograms, the limit being 23. I was quite pleased with myself while looking at it, thinking, I got it just right. But no, the woman tells me I need to pay 50 euros for excess baggage. I look at her confused, telling her it's 50 grams, surely it doesn't matter. She repeats herself and we start arguing until she says, Either you pay 50 euros or you somehow make the luggage 50 grams lighter. I didn't have a carry-on so I couldn't take anything with me. 
At the moment, I remember the 200 gram of chocolate that are sitting in the luggage and I start smiling. I open the luggage, take the chocolate out and start nibbling at it with a grin on my face while looking at the woman, who goes from Pikachu face to annoyed. She tells me to hurry up, even though I was the only one in line, so I offered her some and she just stared at me. I ended up eating exactly a quarter of the 200 grams and lo and behold the scale showed 23 kilos. The woman gives me my ticket while glaring at me and I tell her to have a good day. Well OP, that is malicious compliance perfectly well executed. She told you either make the luggage 50 grams lighter or pay the 50 euros. And you absolutely followed through with the request. So good for you. I hope you had a great flight. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I certainly did reading them to you. So if you did, then go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become a member of our Discord community that just keeps growing and it is fantastic. And like I said in the beginning of the video, all of the relevant links are in the video description below. So be sure to check them out. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys enjoy this content, so thank you once again. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.